Hello, my name is Katie. Welcome to my channel. I've talked about making this guide for a few weeks now, so I am really happy that it's finally done and I'm able to share it with you all. And this guide could not be what it is without the help of two stalwart shinobis of the realm. Chev and Tony, thank you both so much for your suggestions and advice. I'll be linking their Reddit profiles and YouTube channels in the description before the timestamps. And there's gonna be a lot of those because I want to make this as convenient for you as possible. I frequent the Sekiro subreddit, which is one of the most phenomenal gaming communities I'd ever come across. And I notice almost every day there are players new to the game. They come into the sub and they ask for guidance on how to navigate this combat system that's so new and fast and just a whole lot to process. And those of us who've always reached out to help these new players, we always had to type huge walls of text in response. And so I thought, why don't I make a guide? One that can be easily referenced and would have all the visual aid you need to help you understand the fundamentals of combat. I've put in everything that you need to know. So hopefully after watching this guide, you'd feel inspired and that it would help to remove most of the frustration to where you'd actually be able to enjoy the game. So I hope you're excited. Let's get this started. There are a myriad of ways one can cheese through the game. I myself did this. In fact, I'll be using footage from my very first playthrough to illustrate this particular section. The rest of this guide is comprised of footage from practice sessions for my deathless no heal run. Cheesing will never be as reliable as 1. Understanding how the combat system works and 2. Building a solid foundation from the ground up. With these, you can conquer every boss and beat the game, relying on nothing else but your skills with the sword and your grappling hook. Cheese strategies do work when everything goes to plan. They're often structured on hiding behind a wall. Whether they're a physical shielding device, or specific dance patterns to evade your enemy's attacks, or a barrage of spam attacks with the risky hope of stunlocking your opponent. The problem with cheesing is that they rely on everything but what you should be equipped with, which is your own self-honed intuition and set of skills. Prosthetics, items and evasive dance patterns can only go so far. Emblems and consumables can run out before a fight is over. Your enemies can throw out attacks that you weren't informed of, leaving you stuck and out of options. So instead of chaining yourself to strategies that require a whole lot of luck, you're much better off when you're shown all the different types of attacks that exist in this game and how you can respond to them. I'll show you all their tells and timings, so in the end, you'll be armed with the knowledge of not only how to defend yourself, but in fact, use these defensive measures to turn your enemy's attacks against them and carve out your own brand of victory. All of this will be covered in this guide, which will be in seven parts. There are timestamps in the description, so you can jump to any section you wish to focus on. Part one is an introduction to the key mechanic that governs combat, posture. In part two, we'll go over how does posture work and why managing posture is the key to victory. Part three is the differences between deflecting and blocking. Part four is additional measures to safeguard your posture. In part five, you'll learn how to master defensive countermeasures, including the infamous Mikiri counter. In part six, we'll establish good practices for reliable results and enjoyable gameplay. Basically, what not to do in combat. Part seven is putting it all together with three demos. These are no hits versus enemies with very different attack patterns to help you see the ebb and flow of combat. Part 1. What is posture? Posture is measurable by two enormous meters that are much more prominent than the vitality bars and for good reason. Generally, posture damage trumps the vitality in that it ensures you a quicker victory compared to chipping away at your opponent's health bar. The two are intertwined in that more health results in a higher posture resistance, whereas a smaller or depleted health bar is more susceptible to posture ponage. Which is why, at least for your first time playing through, gotcha. no problem. mini bosses who drop prayer beads should not be considered optional because they provide you with a higher posture resistance.
Every four beads, as in each new necklace, offers you a 20% increase in both health and posture. The very first mini-boss that we encounter at the beginning of the game teaches us the importance of posture. As a swift victory is achieved via bringing up their posture meter with very insignificant damage to vitality. This is why fights versus tougher enemies are usually considered posture fights, where it's much more beneficial to focus on the posture meters, as in more or less view them as actual health bars. Part 2. How does posture work? Balancing posture is essentially a tug of war, where the goal is to bring up your opponent's posture while keeping yours low. When you've hammered your opponent's posture meter all the way to the max, you'll be granted a death blow. Got you. On the other hand, and in much the same way, without proper management, your opponent can break your posture, leaving you open and vulnerable. We'll start with how to inflict posture damage. As a rule, posture is built up from two sources. The first is via well-timed attacks. It's worth noting that you can increase your damage output for both health and posture by using various buffs. For sugars, there's Arco and, if you're confident, Yashariku, which give you an increased damage buff of 12.5% and 25%, respectively. Since sugars cannot be stacked, you can use Divine Confetti in conjunction to significantly increase your damage output. This buff works on all enemy types, with a 37% increase on apparitions and 25% for everyone else. Confetti is hard to come by early on. It's found throughout the world, pick it up, and dropped by defeating the blue-robed samurai at the castle. Don't do it. Depending on what ending you choose, later on in the game, this item becomes much more available. The second posture-building source is in a way even more important, and that is by responding to your enemy's attacks with defensive measures, the bulk of which involves deflecting. Which brings us to... Part 3. Deflecting and blocking. These two results are monumentally different, and it's crucial to be able to tell them apart hey, sir, Dad. as they are the foundation upon which the posture system is built. They both involve tapping the block button, and it all comes down to timing. If you see an attack coming and tap the block button too early, or are simply holding down the block button, this results in a block. This emits a dull sound effect and a tiny spark of light. It also results in a huge posture buildup on your part, but none for your opponents. This type of posture buildup that comes from blocking takes a very long time to recover. On the other hand, if you tap the block button right as the attack is about to land, this results in a successful deflection. There's a resonating clang, a huge, bright, circular spark of light, and you'll inflict damage on your opponent's posture. There'll be a small increase in your own posture, at least much smaller than if it were a block, and it's much quicker to recover. In addition, even when your posture meter is maxed out to the red, as long as you're deflecting, you will never be posture broken. If you're playing charmless, as in without Kudo's charm, failure to deflect, as in blocking, does result in physical damage. Because of how deflections work, you can actually defeat some really tough enemies without ever having to hit your attack button. In fact, when you go into a fight the first few times, focusing only on deflecting is a great way to learn your opponent's attack patterns, thereby knowing when your own attack and healing windows will be. The key to victory for most fights is to memorize the song and dance. Every fight has its own rhythm and distinctive soundtrack produced by attacking and deflecting on both sides. There'll be more on deflections in part 6, which covers good practices for successful combat. Part 4. Safeguarding your posture. Since we've gone over how to inflict posture damage on your opponent, now let's talk about how to manage your own posture. Deflecting is an aggressive way of ensuring you'd never be posture broken. However, there are additional posture salvaging methods that can help build your confidence. The first method is a technique, holding block. Holding down the block button results in a stance that helps to regain your posture. 
It recovers faster when you have more health, and slower with less health or when you've taken vitality damage. The fights are typically fast-paced, therefore, in the midst of trying to deflect your opponent, the key to regaining your posture is by holding the block stance whenever you have breathing room. Which you can get by 1. Temporarily creating distance, and 2. Trading off from your attack windows. I have my own strategy that I developed over the course of six playthroughs, and it might sound unconventional, however, it works for me as I'm able to no-hit every boss, so perhaps it'll be helpful to you. My tactic is I'm always holding block when I'm fighting head-on, and then I tap the block button to deflect at key moments. The only times I'm not holding block is when I'm chasing down my enemies or when I'm required to perform other defensive countermeasures. The great thing about this method is, while I usually nail my deflections, if they are mistimed, at least I blocked the physical damage. And since I'm already holding block, I'm able to regain my posture. The caveat is, it does require a bit of practice and memorizing your enemy's attack patterns. The second method is consuming buffs. The first one is Gorkan. This is a yellow candy that can be 1. Found throughout the world, 2. Sold by Ayanama the Peddler if you continue his questline, and 3. Dropped by defeating the spear-wielding Mizen monks. Consuming this results in a steel-clad posture bar, and during its effective period, you'll experience very little increase even when blocking. The second item is Persimmon, which is found in Senpo. Using this allows you to temporarily recover your posture while attacking and taking damage. Both of these items are recommended against enemies with heavy, relentless attacks, as it provides you with a buffer, allowing you to familiarize with your enemy's attack patterns without getting instantly annihilated. The third method is by acquiring latent skills that give you the upper hand with posture. Most of these are found in the Ashina art skill tree, which you can obtain from the Tengu at the tower after the fight with Gyobu. These are Ascending Carp, Descending Carp, Flowing Water, and Breath of Nature, Light. From the Shinobi Art skill tree, you'll need Shinobi Eyes. The fourth method is by responding to your enemy's perilous attacks with defensive countermeasures, which we will cover now in the next section. Part 5. Mastering Defensive Countermeasures 1. How to Perform Mikiri Counter this skill is available very early on from the Shinobi Art skill tree. You can usually tell your opponent is about to perform a thrust when they bring their weapon back in a build-up with the tip of the weapon pointing towards you. Thrust attacks can be deflected, however, their timing is tricky and differs greatly between enemies. Before attempting to deflect, it's crucial to learn how to Mikiri counter. The first real opponent to teach us the skill is the Shinobi Hunter. This mini-boss found at Hirata demonstrates a general rule with performing Mikiri counter. Pay attention to the red kanji that represents danger, which is accompanied by an audio cue. Wait for the kanji to fade, and while it's still barely visible, that's when you hit the dodge button to perform the Mikiri counter, where you interrupt the attack by stomping the weapon to the ground. Here it is again in real time. For thrust attacks with an especially slow wind-up, it's more reliable to use the directional toggle towards your opponent while simultaneously hitting the dodge button, so essentially you're rushing at your opponent to get to them first before their weapon can reach you. This move deals considerable posture damage got you, and is therefore much more preferable compared to moving away from your opponent. This rule of hitting the dodge button as the kanji fades applies to all forms of thrust attacks, including the powerful sidelong kicks favored by the lone shadows. Instead of practicing versus Hanbei Homeboy, who, as much as we love him, is just far too lenient, you'll be better acquainted with this technique when you practice versus tougher enemies, such as the spear-wielding monks and the lone shadow. Both of these enemies are found at Hirata. The regular Ashina John Spearman can also help you with getting used to slow, winding thrust attacks. 2. How to jump over perilous sweeps To my knowledge, a perilous sweeps cannot be deflected, as they are far too low-bearing and therefore need to be jumped over to evade them. You can differentiate a sweep from a thrust because your enemy will bring their weapon down and extend it outwards to their side. The first mini-boss you can encounter who deals both thrusts and sweeps is the second Gimp Mask Ned at the Broken Bridge. Hey, Ned. 
He teaches you how to swiftly adapt and respond to the two different types of perilous moves. The Neds, as in the Samurai Generals, also perform a perilous grab, usually when your posture broken. To counter perilous sweeps, we also need to pay attention to the kanji. As it's about to fade, that's when you jump. If timed right and using the directional toggle, you can land on your opponent with a head stomp that deals a good chunk of posture damage. Some opponents require double jumping to perform the head stomp. 3. Making use of grab attacks To avoid getting grabbed, we can typically run, dodge or jump to create distance. And there are some rare forms of grab attacks that can be deflected or jump stomped. However, these are actually great attack windows, provided we're able to interrupt them before the attack animation fully initiates. Some excellent options that are available to you very early on are Ash, Firecrackers, and a combination of Oil and the Flame Vent. Be mindful that Ash and Firecrackers cannot be spammed, as most enemies have a resistance for certain short lengths of time, usually between 10 to 20 seconds. Also, be mindful of distance, as all of these options are only effective at close range. As a bonus, while your enemies are stunned, this is an excellent time to heal. Part 6. Establishing good practices and what not to do in combat. The game does, over time, unveil a wide array of prosthetics and combat arts for you to experiment with. These are intended as flares to add to your solid foundation, and not meant to serve as the actual premise of combat, in which case they'd essentially become crutches and always at the risk of too many variables. Once you've grown comfortable with the fundamentals, prosthetics and combat arts are there for your creativity, to try out new tactics against different types of enemies. No matter what flair you choose to implement, the principle of successful combat remains the same, with extremely rare exceptions, and it is governed by three rules. Rule number one, aside from select perilous moves, anything can be deflected. We learn this very early on versus Patsy Yoga, where we're able to deflect, or at least guard against, his overpowered jump kicks and fist slams. Bear in mind that while non-perilous moves buffed with fire and poison can be deflected, you will build elemental damage. You can minimize these buildups with consumables. For fire, you can use dousing powder and its variant upgrade. For poison, you can use antidote powder or contact medicine. While the latter does take a portion of your health upon use, during its effective period, it negates all poison abnormalities. So regardless of how intimidating your opponent may seem, the power of deflections is rightfully yours. Wield it, hone with it, allow your enemies to posture wreck themselves with their own attacks, and embody the true cunning of a master shinobi. The remaining rules are correlated. Rule number two, implement close quarter combat tactics, otherwise known as CQC. Any given boss has in their move pool an arsenal of attacks depending on range. By staying close on the offensive, you can effectively cut down their move list, sometimes even by half, giving you a lot less to contend with. It may feel counterintuitive and downright uncomfortable. However, close quarter combat is, by far, the quickest and most effective way of ensuring victory. Oh! Got you! Rule number three, avoid dancing around. If you're coming in from Soulsborne, this can be quite a steep learning curve to unlearn all your intuition. This difficulty can, however, apply to any new player. Before, whether it's previous FromSoft games or most combat-centered titles, while parrying can be performed, the fights usually consist of hit and dodge, where the flow of combat is a lot of dancing around. Now in Sekiro, we are offered so much more ability and creativity to respond to all forms of attacks. It does take time and a lot of practice to stop evading your enemy's attacks and actually responding to them with either deflections or other defensive countermeasures. Your enemy's attacks are incredibly realistic and intuitive, and can track you wherever you move, and can be especially punishing if you're running or jumping around unprotected, as in not deflecting at the ready. Also, do not lock off, as you're meant to respond to your enemy's attacks from head on. The key to swift victories is to stay right in their faces and to close any distance they attempt to create. Instead of moving around so much, focus on honing a fresh set of instincts. Deflect, dodge to Mikiri counter, jump to evade the sweeps, and using items or prosthetics to interrupt grabs.
There is a late game boss where the rules are changed and the fight is all about positioning. I have a guide for that as well if you're interested. There are some very rare examples where the focus is also on positioning, such as Jason Bull at the castle, Jason! where the key is to stay behind him to both get your hits in and stay safe. These exceptions aside, for combat in general, the bottom line is stop dancing around. Stay close, watch your enemy's movements and respond accordingly. Part 7. Putting it all together. At the end of this guide, I'm showing three demos. These are no hits versus bosses that deal very different attack patterns, so you can see the ebb and flow of combat. On that note, I have some final recommendations if you're still struggling with certain bosses. I jumped! These are applicable whether you're trying to beat a boss the very first time, Jesus, or if you're going for a no hit. My first recommendation is to record your fights. It's so helpful to review your gameplay, as you'll see so much more clearly what corrections you need to make. My second recommendation, and it might sound surprising, is sleep. Even the most experienced players have days where all of the timing is simply off. That didn't work. You've done all your research, you know the move list, you can anticipate your opponent's attacks, but it's just not happening for you. In this case, the best thing to do is go to sleep. Not like right away, just set the game aside for the rest of the day and sleep on it. During this time, your brain actually processes all you've seen and done, reinforcing your muscle memory. Many players have reported that they started up the game the next day and beat that boss on their very first try. The power and honor of sleep and muscle memory is completely unsurpassed and therefore not to be underestimated. Now let's go into the demos. These are no hits versus Patsy Yoga, Long Johnsman, and Spevan Spheres. Enjoy. Hello. This is fine. Running away now. Jump. And go back. Patsy, Patsy, the yoga don't shoot. No one behind you. Oil, fire. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ash. Oil. Buy it. Three, four, five, six. Ash. Oil. Buy it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Got you today. Now. That's how you do it. And I've got the bead now. Thank you. Bye bye. Long John thinks he can find us, but we found you first. Taste death from above. Eat the sword. Through the chest today. Once again. Thank you. Bye bye. We're here to get Spevin Spheres. Greatest sphere wielder in all the land. One of them, anyway. There are Spevin of you. Up because we can. 
Behind you! Bye. I hope this guide was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up here in the YouTube comment section or on Reddit. I'll be more than happy to chat with you. So I hope you're ready to get back in there and pwn. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.